Hey everyone, welcome to another video, and here I'm going to talk about a director. A director I actually really like, and that is Christopher Nolan. Yeah, everyone knows who Christopher Nolan is. He's been directing all these great blockbuster hits, whether it's awesome science fiction movies or phenomenal Batman movies. And yes, ever since 1999, Christopher Nolan's been in our hearts, and ah, I love Christopher Nolan. And since he only has nine movies, I can't do a top ten Christopher Nolan movie, so I thought I'd rank his movies from my least favorite to my favorite. Believe it or not, he does have movies I'm not, like, a huge fan of. I don't hate any of his movies, but there's some movies I'm like, I'm like, eh. So, yeah, I thought I'd rank Christopher Nolan's movies, my least favorite to my favorite. Here we go. Coming in at number nine is Christopher Nolan's very first movie in 1999, Following. Following was a very short movie. This is like an hour and ten minute movie, and it's a neo-noir drama kind of movie. And the reason this is number nine is not because I hate it. It's just because I don't find it very entertaining. I don't find it very exhilarating. I don't find it engaging very much. And, yeah, there's some decent writing, and there's some decent atmosphere in the movie. And the performances by some of these actors are okay. Just, I didn't find it very compelling. It didn't really hit me like a lot of his movies did. And honestly, it's pretty forgettable too. I watched this movie. I watched this movie after I saw uh, Inception for the first time because that movie just blew me away. So I'm like, I have to watch all his movies, and I basically I see most of them, but I didn't see this one. I watched it. I've never watched it again since, and I don't think I'm going to. It's not a bad movie. It's just a pretty underwhelming movie. So yeah, it's okay, and it's definitely one of his weaker movies, but it's not that bad. Coming number eight is his new movie, Interstellar. Okay. Okay, I'll say it right now. When this movie came out just in November of last year, I actually wasn't a fan of this movie. I actually didn't like it at all. I'm like, what? Maybe it's because when I went into this movie, uh, this was like my highest anticipated movie of 2014. This was like, I thought this movie would be the best movie of 2014. Like, this is going to win Oscars. Christopher Nolan might actually get his Oscar. McConaughey is going to kill it. Oh. So yeah, when I saw it the first opening day, and I'm like, it was a long movie, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a long, smart, intellectual movie. I saw it, as soon as the movie was over, I was a little disappointed. I didn't hate the movie, but I was so freaking disappointed. And when I rated this movie, when I did writing, when I did written reviews, um, I only gave it a 5 out of 10, and I'm like, ah. I have recently watched it since. I, I, I didn't buy the Blu-ray, but I watched it a couple times, though. And it isn't that bad. Like, I definitely would not give it a 5 out of 10. It's probably like a 6, maybe 6.5 out of 10 movie. There is some great ideas in this movie. Um, sometimes it comes off as kind of a pseudo-intellectual kind of movie, but there is some smart themes to it, and the narrative is not bad. Um, I just don't like the worlds. I don't find it very creative. And McConaughey is good in the movie. So is Anne Hathaway. But I, I, I thought Michael Caine was a little bland. I thought Jessica Chastain was a little underused. Same with Topher Grace. Like, I don't know why he was in this movie. Like, Casey Affleck was also pretty underused. John Lithgow was okay, but the sassy robot was annoying. Matt Damon was a special cameo, and he was wasted. And uh, the visuals were good, though. The cinematography and the visuals were amazing. And, again, the ending was really stupid. And, like, there's... For a movie that's supposed to be, like, this brilliantly smart movie, there's a lot of dumb things in it. And I, I just wish that it was a little more creative. And I wish I had more character development and more character interactions. The movie was so much exposition. It didn't actually show, like, character traits. Like, it was all expo exposition, explaining, explaining, explaining. And that's what no one does with his movies, and sometimes you need it. But this movie, I wanted more character traits. I wanted more character arcs. And I didn't get that. The movie's still good. It's a well-acted, visually appealing movie. And that's why I, I can't hate this movie, but it's definitely one of Christopher Nolan's weaker movies, and that's why it's only number eight. Coming in number seven is The Dark Knight Rises. This is definitely the weaker of the three Batman movies, but I do like this movie, and yeah, it's really good. Like, a lot of people hate on this movie now. I, I think it's good. I think it's good. Christian Bale's great. You got Tom Hardy as Bane. But you think the dark protects you. I was born in it. Murdered by it. Yeah, Tom Hardy was a great Bane, and Anne Hathaway was a decent Selena Kyle, and I actually like the cast in this movie. The action isn't particularly great. There's a few things that make no sense, like, how did Bruce Wayne get back to Gotham? Like, how did he do that? But yeah, I still enjoy the Batman movies. I'm a big Batman fan. Uh, yeah, Joel Schumacher sucks, but I love all the Nolan Batman movies, and I actually like the climax of this movie, and it was a good ending to the amazing Dark Knight trilogy. So yeah, Dark Knight Rises is not his best movie, but I still enjoy it. 
Coming in number six is Memento. Okay, here we go. Here's a lot of hate I'm going to get for this one, but... Yeah, I really like this movie. The idea of this movie is so good. How it like it makes all the movie is just backwards. Like the endings, the beginning, the beginning is the ending. It's so freaking clever. It's so so smart. This movie, the writing is top notch. Guy Pierce is incredible in this movie. And yeah, I'm blown away every time I watch this movie. I got the Blu-ray. It's such a good movie. So why is it placed at number six? I like these other five movies better, actually. I thought, like, when I was doing this ranking, I was trying to order them all up. I'm like, oh, yeah, Memento would definitely be my top three. But then I just looked over them, and I actually watched some of these movies last night again. And honestly, it's a great movie. I love Memento, but I just like these other movies better. I love this movie. I'll never bash this movie. There's nothing much wrong with this movie. There's a couple side things like, I can nitpick, but... I love this movie. Just Nolan is such a good writer and director. He just has other good movies, and I just like them better. Love Memento, though. Don't hate me for only putting it at number six. I still love it. Coming at number five is The Prestige. The Prestige. This is one of, uh, actually, like, on Rotten Tomatoes, this is, like, one of the lower-rated movies. I don't, I, don't know, I don't understand why. This movie is fan freaking fantastic Christian Bale, Hugh Jackman kill it in this movie. I love movies about rivalries and about competition and just how dark it can be and how unlikable two people can be if they're in competition with each other. And these two characters in this movie are so freaking unlikable, but the performances are just so freaking riveting. I'm blown away by this movie, and I love this movie. I love the climax of this movie. The ending is freaking great, and the dialogue is good. The direction is amazing, and again, these performances are just so freaking good, especially with the supporting cast. You got, like, David Bowie, Andy Serkis, Scarlett Johansson, Michael Caine, uh, Rebecca Hall. They're all freaking good. I love this movie, and especially if you love movies about magic. This is a very, very clever movie. And this is one of my favorite Christopher Nolan movies. It's a little underappreciated because a lot of people love The Dark Knight, Inception, and even the new Interstellar. But this movie's fantastic. It's my fifth favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Love it. Coming in at number four is Batman Begins. Yes, the origin story of Batman. Uh, I love this movie. I love the origin story of Bruce Wayne. And this movie did it so freaking well. It did it perfectly, actually. Um, I love the first act of this movie. It's the best part. Showing his backstory, how he became Batman, how he traded with the League of Shadows, how he met Ra's al Ghul. Love the entire first act of this movie. It's freaking amazing. The second act is when he's slowly becoming Batman, making the costume. Still good. The final act is even good, too. Like, uh, when he's fighting Ra's al Ghul, trying to save the city. See, like, this movie is just so good. It's got perfect three-act structure. Each part, it makes sense. Each part works for the movie, and that's why I find this movie just brilliant. This is a fantastic movie. I always dreamed of an amazing Batman movie. I got the Tim Burton Batman movie. I thought it was just a, such a fun, awesome movie. And I didn't even like Batman Returns, but I'm like, what are they actually going to make a dark, realistic Batman movie? And Batman Begins came out in 2005 and showed me Batman can be Batman and be real. And oh my god, I love this movie. Batman Begins is one of my favorite Christopher Nolan movies, and it's actually one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. Thank you, Christopher Nolan, for making Batman freaking awesome. Coming in number three is Insomnia. Okay, I know a lot of people are like, okay, you got Interstellar, number eight. You got Memento, number six. But Insomnia is number three? What the hell is up with that? I find this is the most underrated Christopher Nolan movie. Like, a lot of people do like this movie, but so many people are like, eh, like, it's like a seventh or eighth favorite. Some people say it's like the least favorite Christopher Nolan movie. I love this movie, the psychology of this movie, the depths of this movie, the, the characters in this movie, they're all just so freaking good, and I love these characters, like, I love Al Pacino in this movie, Robin Williams is great in this movie, and Hilary Swank is great in this movie, and I adore this movie, the cinematography, just the opening shot of this movie, and they're showing them going to Alaska, it's just, it sucks me into the movie already, it's almost like in a dreamlike state when you watch this opening shot, it's just so freaking good. And the complexities of these characters and how three-dimensional they are, it's just so freaking good. It's writing at its best. Christopher Nolan did not write this movie, but he did direct it, and he directed it so freaking good. He executed it brilliantly, and it's a very smart, very thrilling, and very atmospheric crime drama thriller, and I love this movie. Robin Williams just kills it as this sociopathic author, and 
Al Pacino just to just see him go through these stages of uh, insomnia and how it's like toying with his mind and how Ron Williams is toying with his mind is just so brilliant and Pacino just kills it in this movie. I love Hilary Swank too and I love this movie. It's a very psychological movie. I love how it goes into the depths of insomnia and the depths of murder and wh what's the right thing to do and should you do this. It also talks about um, maybe if you do the wrong thing in the end it could still be the right thing and there's so many choices these characters go through and the way how it plays out in the ending is so freaking good. You can sort of maybe predict it, but because it's so executed so brilliantly, it's just done in a very different way. It's a little predictable, but the execution's a little different than any just basic thriller. And that's why I love this movie. Christopher Nolan can make a movie that doesn't seem very original, make it original with his style and execution and direction. And that is why I loved Insomnia. This is one of my all-time favorite Christopher Nolan movies. And it's a little underappreciated. And I think people need to give this movie more love because I love Insomnia. It's fan freaking tastic Coming to number two is, of course, Inception. Boom. Boom. Yes, Hans Zimmer's score is just breathtaking. And everything about this movie blew me away. When I first saw it in theaters, I'm like, I have to go see it again. And I did. And as soon as this movie came out, I got the movie. And... I freaking love this movie. This idea, this is Christopher Nolan's smartest movie. It's so smart. It's so breathtaking. It's visually stunning. And everything about this movie, from start to finish, blows me away. It's so freaking good. And the cast is awesome. Just an A-game cast. You got DiCaprio. You got uh, Ellen Page, Michael Caine, Cillian Murphy, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Tom Hardy, Cam Watanabe. All of them are so freaking good in this movie. And the Ages of these levels, of these dreams, and everything. The way they explain the dream state is just so, so brilliant. And actually, very true. Like, a lot of things that they talk about, I'm like, yeah, I've been through that. Yeah, I went through that. Because Christopher Nolan did a lot of research for this movie. And think about it, he studied a lot about dreams and stuff. That's why he made movies like Insomnia and Inception. And I freaking love this movie. It's so freaking good. It's so thought-provoking, especially the ending. The ending is just so good. I don't care if you know if, if the thing falls down or not. It's not the point. It's not the point. It's the ending is that he actually found happiness. And if that happiness is not real or not, it doesn't matter. Because the main character, Cobb, found happiness because he's with his children. You don't know if it's reality. You don't know if it's a dream. It doesn't matter because that's the point of the ending. He wants he wants to go home to his children. And, oh my god, the way Leonardo DiCaprio pl plays his character, Dom Cobb, is just so freaking well done. And this movie is just insane to watch. It's so freaking good. The scenes in this movie are just so iconic. They're going to be iconic. Like that elevator scene and just going around running up the walls doing the fights and oh my god this movie was like watching The Matrix or something and it's actually better than The Matrix and I love this movie. Christopher Nolan directed it beautifully. The writing was at its best and it took five Academy Awards. Didn't take Best Picture. I still disagree with that but I love this movie. It's my second favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Love it. Boom. And my number one favorite Christopher Nolan movie is, no shocker, The Dark Knight. Right from the opening scene to this movie, it's got this bank robbing scene, they're all popping each other. I was hooked in this movie. I'm like, I'm going to love this movie. This opening scene feels like it's a scene from Heat or something. And I am blown away by this movie just from the opening. And then when Batman comes, I'm like, oh my god, and then you got Scarecrow, and oh my god. Everything about this movie is just so freaking good. As you saw in my top ten favorite superhero movies, this is my all-time favorite superhero movie, so it's no shocker that's my favorite Christopher Nolan movie, and I love this movie. The story's so good, the direction's phenomenal, the writing is at its best, and Heath Ledger gave one of the greatest performances in movie history. I love this movie. It's The Dark Knight. It's the best Nolan movie. I know a lot of people are like, oh, this movie's a little overrated. Some people are actually saying that now. But I love this movie. It's my favorite Nolan movie. Love it. Why so serious? Yeah, that was my ranking of the Christopher Nolan movies. My least favorite to my favorite. So please, comment below. Did you agree with me? You probably didn't. So yeah, give me your rankings of your least favorite to your favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Comment below. Let me know. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. And join the dark side.